A capitalistic society can only thrive off of a workforce that works for almost nothing. Okay? A capitalist society must thrive off of continual progress. Like in stock. The stock have to always rise. Doesn't matter the consequence of the people. Alright? I'm going to get into that in a moment. A capitalist society is what we live in. And it, and it started with slavery. In order for this country to become so great, and the world governments so great, they had to be able to deal with the pool of slaves. Why? Slaves work for pennies on a dollar or nothing, but they produce. Okay? So, that's how this country was established. If you can get people to work for nothing, you can capitalize off of the product that comes from this slave labor. That's capitalization. Okay? That's how this country was founded. Who are the slaves? The slaves of the children of Israel. The poor people. The Negroes that was brought over here. They, they're the slaves. Okay? The, the, the Puerto Ricans, the Indians, the people that are just working, the Mexicans, these are slaves. Okay? Now, as long as these people can work for low pennies on a dollar, then stock will always go up in any company that can get slaves to work within their organization. Okay? But this became barbaric. Slaves or slavery beca became so barbaric to the point where they had to switch the game. They had to switch how people were perceived in slavery. So they brought in some scientists or, or psychologists to say, listen, we can still have slaves, but we have to make these people think they're not slaves. We have to change their, their, their means of living. They must think that they are part of regular society. Okay? So we have to, we have to, we have to bring forth a, corp a corporate structure. A corporate structure, and all seeing eye, that the CEO is at the top, the slave is at the bottom, because you know the slaves built the pyramids. Alright? So we have to have a system set up to watch these people, a new world order that can help us build, that can help us build, and when these people get aware of what's going on, we can exterminate them all together. There'll be no need because we'll. We, would, we will move this capitalization or this capital government, which they call democracy, all over the earth. So these slaves will become expendable. So what they did was they rolled out a guy named, uh, um, they, they rolled out Abraham Lincoln and made you think that they emancipated or freed the slaves. But no, they just changed the order of slavery. They, they changed it into a corporate employee structure. A corporate employee structure. Uh, yes. Is that what I have to do the minimum wage? Yes. So they change it into a corporate employee. Let me spell this a little better here so y'all can all get me so I can bring you to, 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 to today. A corporate. Employee structure. And they turned the taskmasters, which were the head slave, into management and assistant managers and gave them a little piece of a pie to do what? To oppose and to implement their system against their own. The same, the same way of uh, what the so-called quote-unquote House Negroes had privilege. Your assistant managers and managers will go against the employees for the sake of the CEO. Same system. You're, the mental, you, you can psychologically swallow the new form of slavery. Now, these slaves, right, are now 
turn to consumers. Consumers. All right? So when slavery was abolished, which, which they call it, which is a bunch of garbage, okay? When slavery was turned from the barbaric slavery to capitalism, they realized that they could sell this idea to the world and capitalize. So you might wonder why the immigrants outside of the country get more privileges than American-born slaves or children of slaves. Why? Get Revelation the 18th chapter for me real quick. This goes into your businesses. Which your businesses are ran, your small businesses especially, are ran by immigrants. So why do these people get... Now, now I'm going to show you something that you, you all probably didn't know. The immigrants, the last part of the word immigrants is what? Grants. 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 So you might wonder why the people within the United States don't get the same grants as immigrants when it comes to setting up business. Because these people have made a covenant with Satan and laid down with Satan to take advantage of the slavery or the capitalistic system that was started here under the one world order. Read Revelation 18. Read it. Revelation 18 and 1. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit. It has become the hold of every foul spirit, read. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird, read on. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Read it again. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. All nations have drunk of the wine of her fornication. All nations have come together to enslave the children of Israel, which are consumers in our society, or human resources. Okay? So, they're telling you something different, like, this is the land of opportunity for all the immigrants to come here and, and share in the American dream. The American dream was founded on who can take over and control the slaves. So the consumers are the slaves. They're, they're us. So all the nations have agreed to come over with knowledge of who the children of Israel are to be a part of of taking over the slave pool. So the businesses that are set up in your neighborhoods, downtown, are primarily who? Immigrants. Okay? So I'm going to show their part in this plan also. In this plan of, of what you would call the swine flu and all this garbage. They, we're going to show that in a, in, in a moment. Okay? Read on. Verse 3. For all nations... Have drunk of the wine of the wrath of, wrath of her fornication. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. It's spiritual fornication because they all worship in one God under the all C and I. That's Satan. I don't care what they call their religion. And they all have one thing in common. Keep the children of Israel from ever knowing who they are. Keep them from their God so that we can continue to take advantage of these people as consumers. That's the only thing keeping our people from ever rising from our status. We're disconnected from our God. So not only are these immigrants bringing over their businesses within America and, and are receiving grants to do it, 
America is willing to let them come over because they're bringing ideologies and religions with them that will keep us sleep. They're not just setting up businesses. They're bringing ideologies and spiritual fornication here. And what people are flocking into all these immigrants' religions, Arab religions, East Indian religions, Asian religions, Hamet Voodoo religions, what people are being taken advantage of? The consumers, the slaves. Okay? Now, let's get back on point here. So, in slavery, you have the slave quarters, which, you know, and you have the plantations. The plantations, right? And you have the master's quarters. The master's quarters. Excuse my handwriting, this thing is moving all over the place. Right? You have the master's quarters. Right? Now, the plantation now is where you go to work. Right? In the master's quarters, they made the suburbs. So you notice, when the slaves move into a particular area due to, they might have a little class, which they call, they, they, they broke things down in classes. Lower class, middle class, higher class, or upper class. So, when you become to a point where you think you have arrived out of your slave, now, of course, that guy that just got arrested because they claimed he broke into his own, own house is an example of an uppity slave being put in his place. But whenever you feel that you have arrived and you move into the suburbs and move into their territory, they find another area to rebuild and move to. And that area becomes an extended part of the slave quarters. Now, how does this tie in to the end? So they protect the businesses first. So who's in these particular conferences? Business owners. How are we going to deal with the pool of slaves in an emergency pandemic? That's number one. Number two, a lot of these co companies have what? Something you can't afford. Insurance. So if anything happens to their businesses, they will get insured. That means they'll, they'll get bailed out and they'll have the money to do whatever they want to do outside of the country. That doesn't apply to the slaves or the consumers. Okay? So, when it happens, the business or immigrants will have the first opportunity to be separated and moved out of the way. Now, mind you, none of these people at the conference, not once did I see one bullet of, the, of any of these people actually being a threat or receiving the vaccine themselves. Okay? This is how they're going to deal with the populace. Now, so when it comes down to it, we had past videos on the King Alfred's plan that was eventually switched to Rex 84 under Ronald Reagan. When it comes down to it, what will happen here is that the people in the suburbs will be protected, except those few that thought that they could get up into the upper class. Okay? These few, believe it or not, have been watched by authorities for a long time. And they will be, they will be moved out the suburbs, back into the slave quarters. Yes. All right? The same thing applies to the school systems, which is, which is really the training pool for consumers. Mm. 
They're in the training pool. Excuse me. Thank you. So all of these administrations together are there together today to prepare for this mass pandemic. I don't know what's wrong with my hand right now. Major pandemic. The schools, the businesses, the master's quarters, they know. The only people that don't really understand what's going on are these people. Us, the children of Israel. So when it happens, they're going to quarantine these people. 